skills that you need to learn and know to like live off the grid. I really like camping, and as of a couple years ago, I really like backpacking, which is the first time I saw backpacking. For me, the feeling of surviving without the luxuries that you usually have is exciting to me. It takes a combination of skills, tools, and knowledge to survive, let alone be comfortable. My project is to explore survival in those areas. I split my project into three parts. One, my research paper. Two, my survival kit. Three, my resource map, which is a map in San Francisco of edible plants that I found go on hike. And four, my uh, edible plant guidebook. My project was inspired by many interests that I've had in survival and camping that I can, I've had for as long as I can remember. But one thing that inspired me directly related to this project was the YouTube channel Primitive Technology. Uh, this guy is just like in the forest and he's just like building like crazy stuff from scratch. Like he built a house and like out of mud and then here he's building a net and a sure fishing. It was really interesting to see how like it was inspiring to see how much he had must have researched and learned to be so successful. My project was directly related to the art. For one thing, I was hiking. And not only was I hiking, but I was figuring out how to live off the land and what equipment that I needed to bring to help me do that. The first thing that I did during the project work time was to my research paper. My research paper provided me a lot of information that I could jump off of into my project. Everyone in our band made research slides uh, of different topics related to our projects. I made several about local edible plants and survival techniques. Once, I filled in the, well, once we had all the information in note form, we made an outline for our research paper body. I split up my research paper by choosing three main topics. Uh, then splitting those topics into three sections, toxic plants, edible plants, and other uses for plants. Once I filled in the outline, I started putting the information into MLA standards format. I learned a lot of different formatting requirements I had to do to make it fit MLA standards, such as making a double space, for having the name of our teacher at the top. Along with that, we had to do in-text citations and work cited with really new to it. At the start of week three, I started working on my, the second and third parts of my project. The second part was the main part, building my survival kit. I always, in the beginning, I only wanted to build uh, a survival kit like in my head, kind of. Just explain why each item I wish would be in there. Then what Philip told me that it was possible to um, actually get all the items and test my kit. Um, okay. It was, uh, and test my kit. With that decision, I really wanted to do that by going backpacking and testing my survival kit. But with that decision came a lot more planning because it's actually going backpacking. But first I had to make my kit. To get ideas for my kit, I decided to make a rating system and I took kits that I found on the internet and I rated them on a scale of one to five stars and then a separate uh, rate of cost, detail, and duration of the time it was made for. Once I reviewed these, I can take ideas that I liked from them to build my own survival kit. The third part of my project was the hiking slash map making part. With the research that I had done on edible plants, I went in, out to the forested areas of San Francisco and identified edible plants. I printed, it, printed out a map of where I was hiking beforehand so when I, uh, as I walked along, I marked edible plants that I found. I hiked on Mount Davison and Glen Canyon Park. Me and Corin had very similar projects, both relating to survival, so we decided to share information and collaborate on some things like going on hikes and giving each other tips. Uh, is that one? Okay, sorry. Um, when I decided I wanted to survive off my kit for three days, Corin walked and Corin wanted to test his survival techniques, we thought it would be a really good idea to go backpacking together and do all the projects. We planned where to go together and how it would work. We looked at a lot of different places and decided on the Tarwater Loop Trail in Pescadero Creek Park. But eventually, for various reasons, we decided it would be better to go backpacking in different places. My next iteration of my survival kit was to finally make my own. I looked over all the kits that I had reviewed and took ideas. I started by putting everything I could think would be in a kit, then narrowed it down to the most important things. For the food part, I went to REI and I um, got a bunch of food. 
had to count the calories that I needed to survive, then found a dry food that would add up to that count. Friday of week five was the day that I was leaving the backpack, and so I had to get my survival kit together and done. During week five, all I had to do was work on my kit. I got all the things from Amazon that I needed and borrowed the rest. I laid out everything on the floor to make sure that everything was together. Before, the day before me and my dad uh, left for um, our backpacking trip, I called the place one last time for some follow-up questions about fires. They answered the question, but then they were closed because of the wind until two weeks later. Me and my dad frantically found another place to go called Henry Coast State Park. Luckily, they were open so we could go focus on packing. One of the problems is that there's a certain amount of weight a kid can safely carry uh, compared to your weight. So me and my dad had to move stuff around until we could got the good weight for me. Then on Friday, we left the Henry Coast State Park. During my trip, I took notes on everything about my survival kit. Like, uh, so I could apply those notes to my second iteration of my kit when I got back. For example, I took notes on how warm I was, the effectiveness of the emergency blanket, the food, and the food. Each night I would talk about how full I felt after meals and how they tasted. I brought all freeze-dried meals from REI, so, which meant they were kind of not really good tasting. So I ate this with like a breakfast skillet, I think, but well, my dad made this. <laughs> Some things that I found out about, about warmth that I took notes on is using a pad is extremely helpful for warmth. Not only like comfortable being comfortable, it's warmth because the ground is really cold and having a, a layer between you and the ground can um, help you insulate. When I got back to school, I took the notes and applied all the notes that I did and applied them to my final survival kit. Then I had to find, finish my guidebook. I had all the I had all the information, uh, so I just had to put it into it. So this is like my semi-finished one. It's not in color, but I, so I, I, that's when I can see my finished uh, my guide. I'm glad that I got everything done on time. The thing that I'm most proud of about my project is the fact that I actually got it together and went back after. This helped my project go off so much and gave me room to iterate on my survival kit. In the beginning, I tried to pile a lot of different tasks on myself, and I'm proud of myself that I stayed calm under pressure. I learned that as long as I keep calm and, work, and have all my information organized, I can do a lot. So, both survival kit, everything that, I can explain everything that's in the survival kit at Exponite, and my 